What's up everyone, this is Share talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about announcements for Romance in Saga Reuniverse. We just got announcement of two banners. Yeah, again, two banners and also one new event. We start talking about the banners. First one is Alien Romancing Festival, the stage banner, bringing five characters from Romance in Saga 3. We already have the information about their changes compared to Global, and I'll talk about that shortly. We have two X users. There is Black and Ellen, they will help you in Remembrance Battle, but there is also Sarah and Mikhail for Pierce damage, and Muse, a Petrify Inflictor that deals cold damage too. Well, I'll talk more about this later. The second banner is called Beauty Romancing Festival, the stage bringing Beauty 4 alongside Maximus and Ludwig, two new characters. Yeah, we fought against Ludwig and Tower in, in Global X events, now we can summon for him, but this is not his full version with the uh, armor and everything. Hopefully they release a Global Axe Ludwig in the future. So this version of Beauty has different uh, debuff. It can debuff Dexter and Agilita on the same time, just like the Hau can, and can get 1 BP by a turn. So it will be interesting for those that don't have all versions of Beauty, but I do believe that if you have Beauty 1, 2 and 3, you may even skip this one without losing too much. But we'll see when we get the information about buffs. Now the New event is kind of similar to the one we have right now with boxes, so gotcha inside a gotcha again, we can get a new equipment, gems and many other things like books and stuff. The enemies will be uh, with HP cap of 19.10 on the last stage. So it seems to be interesting because there are icons for platinum tickets, hopefully we get plenty. I still need to get my Strumnikan. So here we are on hands for a tree post on Reddit and thank you so much again for doing this awesome job. There's a link to the video and information about Mikhail. He got buffed by Dexterity and Agility. His Agility is the highest one for a non martial arts unit in the game, meaning that if you have light speed plus to use with him, he's gonna evade pretty soon and keep using this to very good potential. His Dexterity is very high as well, so as a damage dealer, he is good, but he's more of a farmer sometimes, but can also be used in boss fights. His will and endurance are not that bad, so he can take some damage. Then uh, the first passive me gives him a buff to his dex or the end increase to attack order because his skill number 3 is not fast. So he wants to go first but it's not a guarantee. But the attack itself is double element with 10 uh, BP cost and 2 LP as well because he's just getting a lot of volleys. Morale down to the enemies and morale up to the party so that you do more damage, receive less. This feels like a desperate move in long fights or something to use on turn 1 to try to nuke an enemy right on start. Then the second passive is made for long fights, every time that he attacks he buffs the party for 5% STR and dexterity. This will help you increase accuracy in damage and will probably work pretty well with Deadly Pierce Axe formation that already increases those two volleys to some degree. And you can use Happier's also sword users and mix it up with this and then fired up 6 increases his damage by 30%, he can attack with AoE, his last attack and then switch to the first one when farming, or if you want to use him also just for bosses, the second skill is good. And he can import from his global axe style that quadruple pierce attack that hits many times and heals. So it's a different character with a, a focus on increasing damage capabilities, long fights, well, may not be the best farmer but does have a wide kit. Then we have Sarah that got buffed for Endurance and Love. Well, the Love part does not matter too much, but uh, we got some very nice changes in her skills. She has a passive that increases attack enhancement and defense enhancement, but only 37% of the time. This is something we saw before on the last version of Liz. And the second passive can heal herself in some random ally with 25% chance. This is just like the last version of Snowy and some other healers and fired up 6. Nothing too special here in my opinion, but then uh, skill number 1 is an AoE piercing sun attack. Okay, for BP she does not get 4 a turn, so eventually she runs out. But skill number 2 is fully supportive. With 6 BP she can buff will by 40% on max level and cleanses everyone now as well. It's interesting because she will cleanse and already increase the will so that probably the next turn it won't be inflicted with status elements anymore. When you can only cleanse it does not really fix the problem because 
your resistance is still the same, and if the enemy uses the same attack again, you're just getting inflicted. Sometimes I was using eye token uh, cleansing, uh, some ailments like Paralyze or poison only for the enemy to be inflicted again. So this is actually embarrassing, but I have to say we have been on a piece above Tecosis 5 EP with a character with access to 4 that can keep casting and buffs Will alongside older stuff. There's also Nadar, the character that does damage while buffing Will. The really different thing here is the cleanse part that actually offers some good value. Then skill number 3 is now very good. It was only a damage attack with guard up now they made it become fast and now it cleanses all the buffs applied to the party but i am not so sure if they are not going to make another character with this remember what happened with global x barbara with dark wash that was also uh, available now on rock bouquet and rouge so this may be something that they will apply to future units but right now it's something unique and important Another example is the Abyssal Lord fights where they keep debuffing you so that you have lower accuracy and things like that will stop happening if you have Sarah. There's also Abyssal Naga fight in War Tower where it just decreases your love and charisma to avoid heal and it's now fix it as well. Well, the only problem with this skill is this cycle. It's 9 VP coast, meaning that you usually use this every 3 turns. But there's a past version of Sarah that has access to plus 1 BP and she can even counter and regain BP. So it will even be better use it with her. Unless you really need the wheel buff. I think this one is better using the wheel buff. But this attack may be better use it with the past version. So a pretty interesting setup and will affect how we fight some fights in the future. But like I said, we don't know if any other character will get access to this or not. But in JP, no one is just like this, as far as I know. Then we have Ellen, and Ellen is probably the second most interesting character. She got a buff to her STR, a decrease in dexterity to balance things out because she got a huge buff to her intelligence, and it's pretty huge. I will explain why. Her will is 60% and endurance is 52. She's pretty fragile for boss fights. Can be used in Remembrance Battle especially, but besides that, not a specialist for sure. She got a decrease in her love, just so that she had more status to distribute in intelligence. She's a character that self-stacks STR and BP, so 4 BP by a turn and an STR buff. Pretty nice for noobs. She also got a passive that decreases damage. That was changed, it was only power charge 3, now it's reducing damage and giving her 2 BP on start of fight, because they changed the cost of her skills to become cheaper, so that she does not need power charge 3. But this also comes with a surprise. If she had Power Charge 3 with all the other changes, she would be able to instant kill all enemies three times in a row, totally removing Albert of the game. But no, they just had to change this and not keep the plus 3 BP. Well, the skill I'm talking about, skill number 2. It's a B power attack, pretty powerful already, and it has chance to instant kill. Her intelligence is 81%. Albert is on 40 something, so she has much higher intelligence and will be able to at least one shot and instant kill two waves. After that, well, she lacks 1 BP to be able to. So if you bring someone that can give 1 BP to her, she's going to be fixed. But by herself, this is so sad. We could get her before the future version of Albert that actually has more than 100% intelligence and can do the same thing. And then we have skill number one that just uh, self buffs her STR as well. This one is a very cheap attack, deep power, and she can keep casting till she wants to nuke because she's going to nuke pretty hard with high weak tension. This one here uh, is good since she can attack for slash and blunt with her nuke. That means that the damage will do a lot against uh, enemies if you are stacking your STR. Use this on turn 4 on a boss fight, or if you are just farming, go and use it on turn 1. It's gonna hit for a lot. She's the fourth, the third character actually to be able to use a 4S attack on turn 1. The first one was Rofus, indirectly by Uncito. The second one was Valdor with Blunt and Pierce, and now Slash and Blunt with Ellen. Pretty powerful for farming and also bossing, although she's pretty fragile on fights, you are going to have to bring support to keep her alive. Maybe Glowax and Press gonna help a, a little and someone with Guard Up as well. 
Then we have Muse, and Muse is just kinda of a poor man Taria, because Taria is still the best petrifier, because she can buff her intelligence on start of wave and even have a chance to buff it again. But her uh, petrify chance is low, this one is medium with the higher cost, and also other things like uh, AoE cold damage and a single target damage where she can heal. I don't think that she has too much to offer. But she does have this passive that is a 37% chance to negate damage and random chance to buff a random ally or um, defense enhancement. So this character is more for situational fights in tower or when you need petrify. Besides this, there's nothing else to talk about this unit. Taria will get a future style that it's much better, that fix some of her problems like agility and stuff. So you don't need to pursue Muse if she drops it's nice if you don't have taria and if you need an aoe petrifier but she doesn't offer too much sadly then there is black and black was changed especially for remembrance we lack axe yielders and now black will help you there because of paralyze yeah he also has much better endurance and wield than ellen uh, his dex rate is terrible i don't know why 63 percent but agility is pretty good, his intelligence is bad, but it's enough to just inflict paralyze in the real queen. Uh, he tries to steal some of passives from, well, Rick and Yon Gustav, so he buffs 10% STR for every surviving ally on round begins, so for farming, of course, but he's not as good for farming as those older characters. With his skill number 3, he deals slashing code, this is Pirate Salvo Amplified, and deals critical damage to fish and aquatics. Only to use skill number 1 after that, and this is only Slash, so it's not like Rick that opens with Slash and Heat and then keeps Slash and Heat going. Uh, just Slash is not so important, we do have plenty of different alternatives, but if you need code, well, code it's still pretty lacking. We just got Leslie, she buffs STR. Well, they can be used for one wave, besides that, not so good. And he does have access to 50% increase in damage with passives, so... Uh, I guess, besides farming, now he has a chance to inflict Paralyze with the skill number 2 for, like I said, Rio Queen. And this is going to help people that haven't beat yet, like myself, probably. So, Black is... Uh, Kinda in favor than his past version for long fights because the older version gets BP and STR and even has a chance to heal. This one will be more for farming and just to finish that remembrance battle fight. Well, this is the banner. We have five limited styles, so no chance of an off banner. I believe Sarah and Ellen are the most interesting character of the bunch, and then Mikayu and then Black, and then for last we have Muse. So, uh, we still have to check Bune better if they will change them a lot. I hope they did. I hope they will because they are not so good anyway. And I hope they will because Maximus and Ludwig need buffs to become better in global. And I will do the full review tomorrow. So, stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to support the channel, click links in the description. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye.